Moving on to the next helper, substitute. Here I have some test cases already set up for substitute. I've got them in two forms. Uh, let's look at the bottom form first. So here I'm writing test cases for substitute using parse. And this is okay on the grounds that we've already tested parse. And so we know what it does so we can use it to write tests for other functions. So here I'm checking that um, if I take 8 and substitute it in, for all the x's in 9, I get back 9's. In other words, we had some function um, that took an x but always just returned 9. That's how, that would, that's how we would want to do this kind of substitution. So in this case, replacing all the x's with 8 and 9, we just get 9 back. On the other hand, if we had def f of x is x, then when we call this later with f of 8, we would want to replace all the x's with 8 and x. That's how you would get to this kind of example. Here, what if we want to replace all the x's with 8 in the, uh, the body y? So we've got some function definition you can imagine. It takes an x and return y, so that's a bad y. But what we should do is leave the y alone. Right? The fact that it's a bad y is in terps problem, not subs problem. Subs job is just to replace all the x's with 8 here. And so on for more nested things. If we replace all the x's with 8 and x plus y, then uh, we should get uh, an 8 plus y out. And then finally, if we've got a function called double of x and we replace all the x's with 8, we should get a function called double of 8. That is, that's like we have some uh, maybe quadruple function that takes an x and calls double of x um, on the way to, to doing other things. Okay, so those are all our examples. Hopefully it's more clear what subst is supposed to do. Um, these are the same examples just written out without using parse. So the reason I wrote these out is so you can be, it can be more clear about all the different cases that we need to cover, right? Um, these different expression shapes. So let's move into the template and body step for subst. Here we have two different expressions as arguments, and it, it may not be immediately clear which expression we should use to drive the template and the function. But it turns out that what is just being dropped into place, and n is the different cases that we considered here, the second argument. So our function is going to be based on matching different cases of n. We will have the int e case, we have a, an ide case, we have the plus case, and the molts case, and finally the out case. Okay, so I'll have to fill these all in. In the case of empty, I've just got a number n. Uh, we have a test case to show us what happens here, right? The empty 9 is the n in this case. In that case, we wanted to, we always just want to get the number back, right? Doesn't matter what the variable is, there's nothing we can substitute in. So I could write empty n here again or I could just write in and return the same one that we got in. Either way is fine. In the ID case, I've got a symbol for the identifier's name. And uh, my template just tells me you should do something with that symbol, probably. Um, what do I want to do with the symbol? From our two examples here, I know that I want to compare that symbol with the for symbol, the second argument to subs. If they're different, then I don't do anything. If they're the same, then I do the substitution. So this is an if s is equal to 4. If they are equal, what do we want to do? Then we want to return that first expression, the thing that we're substituting in. Otherwise, uh, we want to leave the expression alone. In the plus e case, I've got a left and a right. My template tells me I probably want to recur on the left and the right. Uh, guessing that the arguments are along for the right. Okay, does this help us? Let's look at an example. When I have plus e, ide, x, ide, y, then recurring with x and y when substituting for x would in fact give me 8 and y back, right? Subst of x with x8 would give me 8 and subst of y with x and 8 will give me y back. So it looks like all I want to do is put those pieces back together with plus e. And then multi e ends up being the same, just putting them together with multi e. 
and then get my left and right here, and then in the app e case, uh, my template tells me we've got a symbol, we've got an arg that you probably want to recur on. And then what does my example tell me? That uh, that recursion is useful because it'll perform a substitution. And then I just need to put things back together with the name of the function that I'm calling. Note that we don't compare the, uh, the function name to arguments because uh, you can't pass functions, uh, functions around. Okay, so we've covered all the cases. We should be able to run our tests. And uh, they all pass, both in the regular int e, int e mode or with using parse as the parse gets.